Hey guys, this is a small test that I did. The real pillar will be twice as tall. Each of these pillars would contain 8 ping pong balls. We will need 64 of these to make a cube. In this test version, I only use a 20 gauge wire. I think it'll be too thin for the real one, so I plan on using the 16 gauge wire instead. The first wire will supply 5 volts to each of the LEDs. The second wire will supply ground to each of the LEDs. So the third wire is more interesting. It goes from the Arduino to the input of the first LED. The output of that LED will go to the input of the second LED. The output of that second LED will go to the input of the third LED and so on and so forth. And because of that, it cannot be a continuous wire. And because these new pixels are too small for generic prototype boards, we'll have to design tiny custom PCBs for each of these new pixels. There are many options for creating a custom PCB. Eagle, KiCad, DesignSpark, and more. But for this project, I'm going to use EZEDA, not just because they're sponsoring this video, thanks Lena, but because it is very easy to use. EZEDA runs completely in your web browser. There's nothing to download, there's nothing to install. Just go to EZEDA.com and click the Try Now, and we're ready to go. At the highest level, we have projects. Each project contains one schematic, and one or more PCBs. A schematic is exactly what you would expect. You bring in electronic symbols and connect them with wires. Once you've drawn your schematic diagram, you click this button to convert it into a printed circuit board. Although it knows how the parts should be connected together, it doesn't know how you would want the parts to be placed on the board. Once you're happy with the placement of all the parts, you can use the auto router to turn the temporary connections into actual physical tracks. So here are the two PCBs. And we need two PCBs because of that zigzag thing. I call it two different PCBs A and B. So there's an A and a B and an A and a B and it's going all the way up like that. So of course these guys actually should be right on top of each other. Uh, you know, just stack all the way up to eight. But due to gravity, you guys just kind of have to use your imagination that these are actually right stack on top of each other. So data will come from the Arduino to the bottom right corner, which is that guy right here. It goes through the NeoPixel and the out of that NeoPixel is going to go up to here, to that next level. And in here, it goes through another NeoPixel, of course. The output of that NeoPixel is going to go up again to this level, and so on and so forth. The positive stays the same, so they're always staying on the bottom left corner here. Negative also stays also on the front right corner. But an interesting thing happens on the very top here. As you remember, we're only using one Arduino pin here. So it goes chaining all the way from the first LED to the 512th LED, way back there. <laughs> and so when we reach the very top, we need to connect it to the next pillar. And the only two choices I could think of is you go across or you go down and go back up again. I think going down is messy, so I discarded that right away. But unfortunately, as you go across, if you imagine that this is one pillar and then this is a pillar next to it, so we can't do this because it goes here and we go across and we have a plus instead of the input. My solution to that is I rotated this pillar 90 degrees, so like that, and then we just rotated a whole pillar. And by doing that, now the output of the left pillar can go to the input of the right pillar here. And the plus is stated the same all the way down the negative stays the same, and the output out of this NeoPixel could go down to this guy right here, and then so on and so forth. I thought that works out pretty well. So to make sure that it actually worked, I drew every single LED on one of the layers, so that's 8 by 8 So here is PCB Type A, and to order it, you just click this button. Click. So we are presented with all kinds of options. How many layer board we have, what color the board we want to be, and how many we want. There are all sorts of options that I'm not even sure what they are. But the one I really like is this guy right here. I'm going to choose 9 by 6. We still have 5 PCBs, but each of them now will contain 54 tiny little PCBs for a grand total of 270 tiny PCBs. And that's enough for half of the cube, so let's order that. So this is half of it. I'll order the other half off camera. I'd like to thank ECEDA for sponsoring this episode. And thanks to all of you guys for watching, liking, commenting, and subscribing. Thank you. See you guys all next time. Bye-bye.